This is false information. We have no slavery in Libya. You're saying the U.S. is badly informed? Yes, I really? think the president is badly informed. Are you worth saving as a government? Are you really worth it? Of course. Eight years after the overthrow of the Gaddafi regime, Libya has descended into almost continual conflict between its rival centers of power. My guest this week here in Paris is Ahmed Matik, Deputy Prime Minister of the UN-backed Government of National Accord, closely allied to groups of armed militias which have been credited with serious human rights abuses. Does a government like that still deserve the support of the West? Ahmed Matik, welcome to Conflict Zone. Hello. Hi. Last April, Donald Trump showered compliments on your main rival in Libya, Khalifa Haftar, which clearly shocked you, and yet you claimed to come back with a message that the US was still behind you. What's the evidence for that? Well, believe, we believe that we've been a US allied for quite a long time. We were fighting side by side to fight Daesh and ISIS in Libya. Times changed. The Kurds thought that as well. Well, uh, time changed because we cannot apply what's happening in Syria and Libya. No, I'm talking about how alliances come and go. Yes. I mean, uh, Mr. Trump said that uh, he appreciated Mr. Haftar's significant role in fighting terrorism. They had a shared vision for Libya's transition to a stable democracy. High praise from the leader of the Western world for your main enemy, isn't it? If that's standing by you, it's a pretty lukewarm way of standing by you, isn't it? We uh, didn't we, say those things about you. No, we still believe that uh, the administration of the United States, the administration of the White House, believe that some wrong mistakes, some wrong messages have been around about Haftar and his fighting terrorism. And I think the foreign minister... You're saying ministers, the U.S. is badly informed? Yes, I really? think the president is badly informed. And uh, I believe that the message passed yesterday from uh, the foreign ministers uh, with uh, Libyan foreign ministers and the Libyan internal ministers that they want to see Libyan stable and uh, the problem in Libya settled through a political process. Yeah, but they don't necessarily want you to win anymore, do they? Uh, the, the issue is not winning a war. We are fighting for Well, you stabilities. won't talk to Haftar, will you? You've ruled out talking to him. No, it's not the relations between the GNA government and Haftar. The, the government of national Yes, the, our government. Uh, we believe that the Libyan people should win for bringing Libya to stability, to have a democratic countries, to have a country which rules by law and not getting back to a military rulers for the but country. But you, said, this is you my, said in June that this you, is flatly, my victories. you flatly rejected the idea of talking to Haftar. Haftar can't be trusted, you said. Talking with Haftar is out of the question. We need a partner. That's what you said. When you go to a peace process, you need a partners. And is Washington Haftar wants you to talk, so you're not on the same page there. Well, Washington. They want you to talk. No, Washington. Said did, that. Washington, sorry, Washington did not say that we want. They want us to talk with Haftar. Washington said that the political process should be peacefully, not through a military. Uh, you know, attacking uh, Tripoli is not the solution. They did say that a State Department official said in April the U.S. is consulting with a broad range of Libyan leaders as well as our international partners to pre press for stabilization and bring Prime Minister Al Saraj and General Haftar back to the negotiating table. So they want you to talk. This, uh, you think they stay in the same position after eight, eight, eight months of fighting around Tripoli? After all the attack on hospitals and schools? After all the life that we lost uh, from both sides on that? I think the U.S. message is completely different today. I think they want to look at who are causing this war in Libya and who's the causing this proxy war in Libya. You hope it's different, but you have no evidence that it's different. In June, we had the acting U.S. Defense Secretary, Patrick Shanahan, also saying, what we've said before and what I do support is Field Marshal Haftar's support in terms of his role in counterterrorism, but where we need his support is in building democratic stability in the region. So they're talking, still talking about multiplayers talking to each other. 
Yes, but the same issue. You have to send a, a clear message to everybody that he don't want a democracy in Libya. He want to rule Libyans for uh, quite some time until he see that Libya is stable to go for democracy. I think this is a conflict within what you exactly say from the foreign ministers or the, uh, the, the defense minister. You've been pushing the message for a long time, the GNA has been pushing the message for a long time, that you can win and that um, you will finally um, beat him back outside of Tripoli and uh, he knows the game is over. He doesn't seem to know that the game is over. Why have you misled people like this? Well, you think we mislead people, but uh, I believe after eight months he did not succeed to get into Tripoli. After eight months of fighting, with all the support that after getting from outside Libya, he didn't win that. He didn't get to Libya and Tripoli. He said that I will be in Tripoli in two days. And he uh, said it repeatedly that the GNA is a part of the past. Now we, since the 4th of April, was almost eight months, he did not succeed in this. Look at the way around. Mr. Matik, what's driving this conflict isn't just the, the failure to hold talk, it's the fact that the war economy developed over many years has made Libya's militia groups absurdly rich and they refuse to give this up, don't they? And that includes militias that are allied to your government as well. Well, uh, we had a clear program to clean up Tripoli and clear up Libya from all militia. And our program started well, you haven't in gone February. very far, have you? Well, we started in, the, the, in February with our uh, internal ministers. But unfortunately, Hafter's attack on the 4th of April and make all this program just stand and stop. So uh, it's clear that he want to cause, he want to use any excuse to attack Tripoli. This is not a problem of militia. It's not a problem of economics. When the GNA government came to power, the production of oil was just 120 barrel a day. Today we are talking about 1,200,000 1, barrel a day. When we came to power in Libya, the Libyan currency had a lot of problems. Let's, talk about, our, these, yes. let's talk about these militia groups, because in October the World Bank said there was now an open war in your country for power and wealth capture. And report after report has suggested that only the militia groups hold sway in your country, that the Prime Minister has little, if any, real power over the whole country, or indeed the forces which are ostensibly under his control. Power rests mostly in the hands of the militia uh, cartel. This is the view of the small arms survey. Well, uh, on one groups. side, on one side, the whole world stand by the GNA, politically in public announcement. But under the table, many of these countries are supporting this militia, and that's why we have the problems. We want a clearance from the rest of the world and country who were helping us in 2011 that they are really stand by the government. The rest of and the world is peeling you to cut your links with these corrupt militia groups who you continue to ally with. Yeah, but still, Why don't you? some, some Why of don't these you? countries, they make this the militia stronger. And this is exactly what we're looking for, that in Berlin process, they stop helping different identity than the government of Libya. Who's helping? Who's helping these Many groups? countries. Which, well, which countries? European countries, our neighbor countries, and some Arab countries. So, so you're blaming it on the, on the Europeans that you have close ties with murdering militia groups who extort, who fire off uh, their weapons against civilian areas. It's all Europe's fault, is it? And that they are deeply involved in the corruption of your administration? Well, uh, they don't trust the government. They believe that some of the militia are stronger than the government, and they make, make well, they've them they've proved that, haven't they? Well, uh, they don't prove it when they have to attack Tripoli. Everybody was aligning with the government to defend the capital from a military rulers who want to rule the country. Take the Bakara Battalion. It was ordered by the GNA to disband after its leader repeatedly involved in fighting at Tripoli Airport. He took no notice. The Special Deterrence Force, this is a group that detained two journalists for questioning and arrested others without warrant. One of its commanders said, we can't act as if the government were in a position to give us orders. In other words, they take no notice of you. So that's how, that's how much influence you have on these militias. We need time to bring our military together. We need time to make our security better. 
You so, shouldn't have got into bed with these deeply corrupt, violent organizations, should you? Who said that we get bad with this militia? This militia was existing before the JNA government even exists. We came in power with, with more than 30 or 35 militia in Tripoli. Now we have only a few, more, less than three or four in Tripoli. And now under your government, a cartel of four major militia groups have gradually divided up the capital between themselves, and they now hold you and the government of National Accord ransom to their changing demands and their endless feuds and corruption. Well, I think you have some good information, but some of your information is quite old. Since the attack of after Tripoli, everybody is uniting under the umbrella of the JNA. We don't have militias who are as powerful as your report explained. Your own interior minister, Bashaga, um, he blurted it out during an interview in January. He said, his interior ministry budget falls under the control of militia groups by force. That's what he said. The ministry's expenses have reached 300 million dinars and widespread corruption was found there. So he's saying his ministry budget belongs to when, the When Mr. Bashaga, our minister, say that, the whole report should say that he started his program to clean up his minister from uh, this corrupted militia. Clean and up? Your, your government is rotten to the core with these people involved in, in your budgets, taking over your budgets by force. It's rotten to the core, isn't it? That's why we have new ministers. That's why he started his program in the last March. So uh, everybody knows that you cannot clean up from 30 militia in one day. You wake up and you have all things done. You need times and the process. And the extortion has gone on and you've let it happen, hasn't it? They have, over the years, the last two years, they have extorted and attempted to extort huge sums of money from the government. You have they? to look at the whole story. The government of GNA came to power in 2016, was outside Tripoli, came to Tripoli, cleaned up Tripoli from a lot of militia, start this war against Daesh and, uh, and ISIS, insert after all Haftar the three... Haftar says he is um, after beating, three or four beating months, Daesh and ISIS. <laughs> have to say, have to say, you. Have to say that he cleaned up Benghazi, he cleaned up Derna, but never mentioned that Daesh, insert, he done the job. We done that job after only four months of arriving in Tripoli. At the you same time as your militia groups are extorting from you. You know that exactly when the country is divided, you have to work first and you have to have priorities. Which our priority? Cleaning up the country from ISIS or fighting the militia? Mr. Matig, if you don't stand for law and order and an end to corruption, you don't stand for anything at all. No, do you? we you do. really don't. We do, but we get to a country, and our country had a long war with ISIS for more than a year and a half. Once we done with ISIS, we start up to rebuild our financial institutions, and when we get to our financial institution, we find a problem with militia, and we have problems with our oil production. At the same time, we find Hafters attacking oil field, and we don't want to go in conflict with him because we have our internal problem with the militia. So we have a priorities. As I explained to you, we have a priority. ISIS issues, rising the production of oil, making the life of Libyans better. And of course, we have to clean up our country from militia and their controlling of our many Maybe you're doing it the wrong way around because these militia groups have carried out extrajudicial executions. They have attacked civilians and civilian properties and abducted tortured and disappeared people. Maybe you should have started with them. Oh, we have and, a problem. And the, and, the hold, and the hold they have we, on your government ministry. We have a problems with our borders. We have a problems with the refugees. We have a problems of uh, illegal immigrants. We have a problems to make our Libyan currency for the six million Libyans, their life better, to improve their economies. We have to find a way to have you know, step one at the time. We cannot do it all at the same time. How can you claim, though, to be any kind of legitimate authority when your own affiliates murder and steal their way around your country with absolute impunity? None of these militia groups have been brought to account. There's no intention to bring them to account, is there? Of course there is. You could have taken some of the leaders, you could have put them on trial if you were really serious about doing something. Yeah, and you put your capital, your own capital at the risk. At the same time, there is an, a terrorist attacking other city in Libya. So, But then people positions. are going to ask at the end of the day, are you worth saving as a government? Are you really worth it? 
Of course we are worth it. We make the life of the Libyan better. We save the life of people in Syria. We, live, we, we, we make the life of the uh, Libyans uh, instead of having $1 for $40 today is for uh, dinners for one dinner. One, one You're making life better and a third of your people want to leave the country. Well, a third of them want to leave your country. Well, because the people who are, or the country who are helping uh, the other side attacking the capital and making the life of Libyan worse and causing a proxy war in Libya. And what about cleaning up the appalling treatment of many thousands of migrants in your country? In, in June, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights urged you to launch an immediate investigation into the disappearance of more than 150 migrants from the al Khams detention center under the oversight of your department for combating illegal migration. Fact is that 203 people were delivered there on May the 23rd, by June the 7th, the facility reported that only 30 were left. What happened to these people? Well, we have a lot of immigrants in Libya who's not staying in the, in the that centers. It's particularly disturbing, though, yes. in the light of the fact that immigrant migrants are being sold into forced labor to smugglers who promise them transit to Europe, and they're being sold from the al Khams, aren't they? Libya alone cannot deal with immigrants' issues. This is You can't deal with slavery? This is, no, no. You can't deal with slavery? This is a report had done. We have no proof of it, okay? And we work closely with our, you know, ministers. You have no that proof? You know this is going on. Yeah. You've known for the last two years it was going no, on. No, this is not right. This is, not, this is false information. We have no slavery in Libya. We have no what so-called slavery issue in Libya. We have to work with the international community. What is the international community? What is the you, Europeans? You are, you been are, denying, us. You been are asking. denying what all the reports have been saying, that no. people are being sold to people trafficker traffickers and women are being sold for sexual exploitation. You deny all that, do you? We have no information as a government, otherwise we do our job. How come they this. have much more information than you? They're better informed than you well, are. Well, uh, where they are when the government is working closely with the international community to save the lives in the middle of the Mediterranean seas? Where is this report when our Coast Guard, with just very few vessels that we have, we save thousands of lives every morning and every day? Where there are these reports when we try to uh, help these immigrants in the middle of Sahara Desert bring their life to more stable and uh, live in Libya. We have more than 800,000 immigrants in Libya, live closely with Libyans. Where are all, all these reports? We've been doing a lot. We, we've been working a lot to save the life of immigrants. We believe that we should have better reports and better uh, understanding of the problems if the international community is committed and willing to work with the Libyans, not sending only messages about slavery in Libya. We have been promises a lot and a lot from Europeans, but nothing being done. Many of the, since 2016. So, so you're denying responsibility for this? No, I'm not slavery. denying responsibility. If something happened and we are responsible for it as a government of Libya, we will do our best and we're committed to work with the international community the to American make it to life of the migrants is better. But what the Europeans, what the international community done with this? The why they are accusing the Libyans? Mr. Matik. Why, why they did not do what they have to do with the Libyans? When we Mr. ask Matik. for vessels, we yeah. ask for help to uh, do a real program. They have. They've been giving you plenty of training. EU no, has been given plenty nothing. of training. And you, and you and your Coast Guard... I accuse European and European committee many times, uh, com uh, community many times that their promises, it's very, very, very low than what they already promised us. If you were doing so much yourself, why do you continue to employ people in your Coast Guard who've been sanctioned by the UN? I'm thinking of one of your Coast Guard officials, Abdul Rahman Al Milad. According to the sanctions listing from June last year, he heads the regional unit of the Coast Guard in Zawiya that is consistently linked with violence against migrant and other human smugglers. Why do you still employ these people? I think there is a report coming from our Minister of Interior saying clearly that he is not an employee of our Minister of, uh, of Interior. The UN panel of experts claims that he and other Coast Guard members are directly involved in the sinking of migrant boats using firearms. The UN says this Coast Guard is consistently linked, and you say you know nothing about it. No, I said our Minister of Internal, they have a clear statement that this man is not employee by the Minister of Internal. So who is he employed by? The, the Coast Guard then? Uh, well, I, I, He heads I, the Coast Guard. According, according to the sanctions listing, 
says that he collaborates with other migrant smugglers, such as Mohammed Kachlaf, who sources suggest is providing protection to him, to carry out illicit operations related to the trafficking and smuggling of migrants. Several people in criminal investigations have stated they were picked up at sea by armed men on a coast guard ship called Talil, used by Al Milad, and taken to the Al Nasa detention center where they are reportedly held in brutal conditions and subjected to beatings. He, of course, denies any wrongdoing. Of course, if something like this happened, we as a government condemned all this kind of actions. And if he's working with our Minister of Internal or our Coast Guard, he should be demanded and jailed. In 2017, the UN Secretary General appealed to your government to investigate reports of slaves being sold in Libya, and you personally, you personally announced the setting up of a commission of inquiry to investigate. Where is this commission of inquiry? Well, the commission... The UN has done. never heard of it. Yeah, the UN had oh, the whole report about it, and our Mr. Minister of Justice lead this commission and have a clear program. That's why I said no, that's all funny. Nobody, reports. nobody have we talked to, including the UN, has ever heard of this commission that was set up, you say? No, we set it and headed by the, our Minister for Internal, and they done two public announcements about the whole report. About slavery? About there is nothing in slavery in Libya. And this is, was a false well, report simply, done by that's CNN. That's simply in direct... Uh, contradiction to all the reports that are pointed to it. Well, Authoritative reports. Well, maybe, maybe you got only the first part of the report. You don't follow up with the rest of the report. You can't even tell me where these people in comms went uh, when you were contacted by the UN and asked specifically earlier this year, where did these people go to? Well, you are talking about... They disappeared. You, they did not disappear. They went out of their center. Well... I said there's more than 800,000 immigrants live in Libya outside the centers. So you cannot claim these guys as went out of the center and they are not living in good condition in Libya. The U.S. Embassy says that the endemic corruption in your government and the militia influence over government ministries has contributed to your inability to address trafficking effectively. You have some responsibility for this. You have responsibility for these migrants, many of whom are kept in appalling conditions indefinitely, subject to abuse, beaten up, some in conditions that amount to torture. Are you prepared one day to go into a court of law and justify why you kept people in these conditions? As long as we have information about what's happening in these centers, and that's why we have a regular visitor from a commissioner from UN and different places. We are doing our best to keep this up to standard. It's not but a priority, though. Is but it? sometimes, sometimes it's difficult to deal with this when there's somebody attacking hospital and school in your town and your country. You cannot uh, talk about immigrants and their problems. I know it's a humanitarian tragedy, and we believe we will do our best, despite that there is nothing being done from the international community. There is nothing being done. There is no real help. What you hear it's about... It's easy always to blame somebody. No, I'm not blaming them. Really? I'm not blaming them. You we, have a large we, part we, of the responsibility. We yourself. Are, we, yourself. Are, we are an African nations, an Arab nations, and the Mediterranean. And there is a responsibility lie on our shoulders as a government of Libya. But we are in time of war and conflict. And that's why we need the international community to stand by us, helping us to uh, manage this file. It's a big file. Libya cannot deal with this file alone. And that's why we ask the international community to stand us. And get that's rid why... of the militias. Of course. We need to, rid... We... We need to rid... get the militia. When? We need to get rid of the military rulers. We need to have a better life when? of Libya. When the government of national court has been there. Look at what the government of national court did. Look, in three, four years, name one government in the world, then uh, liberate a city like Sirte from ISIS without any boots on the ground, helping the Libyans. The Libyans did it alone. The government, beyond the war and the attack of Haftars, of the capitals, we have a better financial uh, and you have a long list of, and you have a long list of failures as well
Of course, there is a failure. Long list of failures. I'm not failure I'm not to saying, introduce the package saying, of reforms I'm that you saying. agreed last year. Yes. Lifting fuel subsidies, auditing, yes. unifying the central bank, failure to settle the teachers. It's not our failure fault. Failure to invest in basic services no, like no, electricity. No, no, no. no. I, said, I said it's very clear for me that uh, we had a lot of success stories. And we have a failure. We have a success story that we can proud of it. We are very proud of it as a government. But at the same time, we have problems because there is, there is very limited time. There always there is a, a problems with conflict in Libya. There is always that countries who doesn't want Libya to be stable. And there is a big challenge for government who rule during a conflict and during the present of ISIS and terrorism in the country. Okay. Ahmed Mati, good to have you on Conflict Zone. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We've Thank run out you. of time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.